Hey y'all and welcome back to my little corner of the internet. My name is Lilith and for today's video I'm going to give you my social media tips for the social dilemma. Before we get into that, don't forget to hit the subscribe button and ring that bell so you never miss a video and drop a like on this video. It helps so, so much. We all want more time. We watch videos on how to be productive, how to have the perfect morning routine, the perfect evening routine. Over here on this side of YouTube, we try to build the perfect day. And in all of those videos, I see people say, get off your phone. Don't pick up your phone first thing in the morning. Don't be on your phone an hour before bed. Stop mindlessly, endlessly scrolling. Put your phone down and you'll have time to be more productive. But what I don't see in any of those videos is practical tips on how to put your phone down. So that's what I'm here to show you today. Because social media platforms want you to stay on. They want you to keep scrolling. They are built to keep you there. And from what I've seen, most people are not taking advantage of all of the settings built right into your phone to offer an antidote to the social media algorithms. Now I'm not here to tell you to stay off of social media always, but I am here to show you how I use it more responsibly. I'd be lying if I said, just put your phone down, just get off of social media because I do my job through it. I want you guys here, but I want y'all to build it into your life in a way that doesn't hinder you. Productivity wise or mental health wise, I'm not here just to say, use social media more mindfully, like I see a lot of people say. That is true, and that is a good thing to do, but I never see people giving practical tips on exactly how to set up your phone to work for you. I know that the documentary, The Social Dilemma, from a few months ago was very popular, and I saw many people delete all of the social media apps off of their phone. That is not what I'm asking you to do, and I don't think that that's the proper thing to do. While there was a lot of interesting facts in that documentary, none of it were new. All of it was stuff that I and most people already knew. It was just put in front of our face in a way that was quite fearful. I do believe that the documentary was fear-mongering. I know that they have to make it more interesting. I know that they have to make documentary is more interesting so that people will watch. But the storyline of the teenager being controlled like a puppet just isn't reality. But in case you're worried, or in case you want to learn how to end the cycle of mindless scrolling, I'm here to show you how I use my phone responsibly and in a way that works for my life. And the way we do this is create friction. You know when you're watching Netflix and the message pops up, are you still watching? It's easier to get up and move on to something else at that moment than in any other time during a binging session. Because that little bit of friction gives our brain a chance to stop and say, wait, do I want to keep watching? Or do I have other things that I want to do or I need to do? That is a small example of how friction should be built into our social media use and our phone use but most platforms don't do that most platforms want to keep you there for as long as they can they make endless scrolling the norm so you keep going for that next dopamine hit so all of the tips i'm going to be showing are for iphone but i'm sure androids have some of the same or similar settings if they don't or if they do let me know in the comments and let me know if there's any more settings that android has that uh, iPhones don't but I have an iPhone so that's what we're gonna be looking at today so the first thing I want to mention is declutter your phone iPhones now have an app library where you can hide away apps that you don't want on any of your actual pages you can still get to them by scrolling to the end and searching your app library or the same search that we've had for a very long time declutter your digital space. Make it look nice and understandable and I don't fill up my whole page with apps. I only fill about half of the page with apps. 
I've only ever really filled two lines of apps in my phone. And recently when widgets came out, I popped some of those in there. So now they take up about half of the page. Notifications. So I'm gonna go into my settings and I'm gonna go down to notifications. My number one tip, if it is the only thing you take away from this video, limit the apps that are allowed to notify you. You choose when to look at your phone. Your phone does not tell you when to look at it. So if you notice, I have notifications turned completely off for 90% of my apps. So if we go into FaceTime, I have all of my notifications turned on for that so that, you know, if a friend FaceTime me, I can answer it. At the top, you have an allow notifications. How I turn notifications completely off for apps is just by clicking that little switch, but we're gonna leave that on. And then below you have options for how you want the banner to pop up. So this is what you see. This is the little card you see that when you're on your phone pops up at the top of your phone or pops up in the list when you pull down your tab or pops up on your list when your phone screen is locked. I have those all turned on for FaceTime because I want to be able to answer a FaceTime for friend or family members FaceTiming me. Under that is sound. Obviously, you can set the sound for the notification to whatever you want. Under that is badges. So specifically for badges, that is the red dot that appears in the corner of your app, showing you, hey, you have this many notifications in this app. I want you to be super careful about which apps you allow to have badge notifications because out of all of these types of notifications, the badge notifications are the worst for you. They gamify your notifications. They make your brain play whack-a-mole with the red dots. You want to open every app so that you can get all the red dots cleared. So turn off the red dots for almost everything. I only have badge notifications on for just a few apps. None of that is like fun apps. All of that is work-related, or life related or phone specifically related. You might think, well, how am I supposed to know if somebody sends me a Snapchat or somebody sends me a message on Instagram? You won't. And that's the point. You will check your phone when you have time to check your phone and not when your phone tells you to. This way you'll batch more of your messaging if you do a lot of communication through certain apps that you turn the notifications off for because you'll answer more of the messages at one time. Batching saves you time. And also you'll find out what apps you really like to use. Because say for example me, I'm not a huge fan of Snapchat. I don't really use Snapchat that often, but I use Instagram a lot. I do my business off of it. So I find myself checking the Instagram app as a part of my daily habit of like checking my apps that I need to check for business, but I don't find myself checking Snapchat every day. And that's okay. I don't use it a lot. I found that that is an app I don't like. And if you find that you just forget about certain apps and you just stop using them completely, that's also okay. That means you may want to think about deleting that app because it's not serving you. It's not something that brings you joy. It's not something that sparks joy. So declutter it from your phone. Now, obviously you can't do that with all the apps you don't like, especially if there are ones for like work, but you get the idea. After you've gone through every single one of your apps and customized the notifications for it, you're gonna scroll all the way down to the bottom of the page and that's where you'll find settings for Amber Alerts, Emergency Alerts, and Public Safety Alerts. So you can choose to turn those super loud, startling notifications off if you'd like to. I turned the Amber Alerts off because I found that it was just startling me, interrupting me, and I never actually looked at them. But if it's something that you look at, then leave it on. Of course, I left on emergency alerts and public safety alerts, you know, just for bad weather, stuff like that. And at the end of this video, we're gonna go into the watch app and I'll talk a little bit about notifications and settings and stuff for your watch, if you have an Apple watch. You're gonna go into your phone under do not disturb and you're gonna set a do not disturb window. Now you can turn do not disturb on and off whenever you want. If you just pull your phone down, you can hit do not disturb and that is on. But personally, I like to have a window set when I won't get any notifications, calls, messages, 
none of that and mine is actually quite a large window it is 13 hours 8 p.m to 9 a.m that might be too large for you you might start off smaller just like a couple hours before bed or a couple hours in the morning but for me it personally i have my window has grown over time as i've really gotten more used to it and as i've told people in my life like hey you can't contact me after 8 p.m i'm notifications are off i'm not looking at my phone and they understand because most people understand that like being on your phone all the time is not great. And so setting those boundaries with yourself and making sure that people in your life know about those boundaries is super helpful. So I have my schedule set and my phone is silenced when that is on. You can allow calls from specific people. So I have my favorites can still call me and I think I have two people set up in my favorites. It's my best friend and my boyfriend, that's it. Now I'm sure that you've been wondering like, what if there's an emergency during your do not disturb window? That is why you have repeat calls on. Just as I was saying, you verbally tell the people around you in your life about your D&D window so that you set the expectation with them. You also tell them, if you call me twice in a row, it will bypass the D&D in case of emergency. So people in my life know that if it is after 8 p.m. and they wanna get a hold of me and it's an emergency, they have to call me twice and it will bypass the D&D &D and I will get their phone call. So that's a really, really cool setting that iPhones have for emergencies, stuff like that, so that you don't have to worry and you can have more control over your phone time. You can also set up do not disturb while you're driving. I don't have that set up because I have CarPlay so I can use voice to text to do anything while I'm driving. So do not disturb sets it up so that your phone cannot tell you when to get on it but screen time tells you when to get off of your phone. D&D for incoming things, screen time for you coming on. Under screen time, we're gonna go to downtime and we're gonna set a downtime window. This is the time that you want to be off of your phone. It's gonna shut all of your apps off for this window of time. And you can set a custom schedule like I have here, so that on weekdays, I don't get on my phone 9 p.m. to 9 a.m. Okay, hey, sorry guys, my camera died and it was lunchtime, so I went ahead and broke for lunch and decided I would finish filming this video after, so we're back. That's why it may look a little different or lighting may be a little different. Also, my partner is in a meeting right now in the next room, so if you hear somebody talking in the background, that's what's happening. I reviewed the footage, saw where I left off. We're just gonna jump right back into where I left off. I believe that we were in screen time and I was telling you about my downtime window and how my downtime window starts at nine, but my D&D &D window starts at eight. So I have an hour there too. <gasps> I'm sorry, I also have the hiccups because my partner just made me laugh a lot. So I'm gonna try and edit those out, but yeah. Uh, hopefully that goes away. <gasps> Anyways, so because my downtime starts an hour after my do not disturb window, my phone can't tell me when to get on it. I have that choice. And on Fridays, I have downtime turned totally off because Friday night is my night to stay up until whenever, play video games and do whatever I want. So I do give myself one day a week to just feel it out and do whatever I want that night. Although typically I'm not on my phone a whole lot unless I'm live on Fridays anyways, because I do a Twitch stream on Friday nights, which I'll link my Twitch down below if you wanna go follow. I'll also link my gaming YouTube channel. There is one video finally up on there. It's quite long. I don't expect you to watch the whole thing, but it'd be cool if you go check out that other channel. Next, we're gonna go down to app limits. So I personally don't use app limits, but if you're struggling with spending too much time on specific apps or app groups, you may find app limits useful. What you can do with app limits is really cool. You can set like your whole social media folder, all the things that are considered social media to a specific time limit. It will allow you to have that much time in total on all of these apps. Or you can choose just specific apps that you may be struggling with and set an app limit for the amount of time that you would like to spend on that app a day or the amount of time you want to limit yourself to every day. 
I personally don't use these because generally when I'm spending a large amount of time on social media apps, it's because I'm like live and so it's a little bit different for me but I could definitely see it being super useful for someone who is who's addicted to Instagram or Facebook or something like that. I don't have any communication limits set up and I haven't really messed with those um, so I'm not going to go over that but you can look into it if you would like. And then next we're going to go to Always Allowed. This is where you can choose specific apps to bypass your downtime. So I just have a small list here that will show up as shortcuts on my lock screen so I can go straight to the apps. I don't even have to look at the apps that I don't want to be on. I can go straight to the app that I need and it bypasses the downtime that I have set for myself. So when all the other apps turn off at 9 p.m., these apps are still on and available. I have Maps, Audible, GoodNote, Music, Notion, Podcast Reminders, and Weather allowed that I'm allowed to use when my screen time is on. So if it's after 9 p.m. or before 9 a.m., if I want to jot down a reminder real quick, if I want to jot something down in Notion or in GoodNote, I have access to those specific apps because those I use for like work and notes and stuff like that. Although generally, during that time period, I will only use my watch, which is plugged in right now, um, to add quick reminders to my reminders lists or anything else that I need to do. I kind of use reminders as an inbox, so throughout the day I'll be like, hey, remind me to do this, remind me to do this. And then at the end of the day or at the end of the week, I'll look at that list and I'll add it to my bullet journal in GoodNote or I'll add it to my content calendar in Notion. So that's kind of how I do. But this is not about work and productivity, this is about setting your phone up and setting yourself up for success. So let's get back to it. The content privacy restrictions, I believe, is more for like child lock settings, which we're, that's not what we're trying to do here. So I leave that alone as well. Okay, so I'm actually gonna set up an app limit real quick, just so you can see what it looks like when an app is off. And so you can see what options you have when your app is off because it's not like you can't access it at all. There are some ways around so that you can either finish up what you're doing or if you're on vacation or something, you can just say ignore the limit and not have to redo any of your settings. So let's do it with Instagram. I've already been on Instagram today a little bit so we'll set it at seven minutes. Let's see if that has the app off. Yeah, so I've already been on it for more than seven minutes today. So as you can see, the app is darkened and there's a little symbol next to it, a little a little sand timer dial thing. I don't know what they're called. I can't remember what they're called off the top of my head. And you can see that it's that app is dimmed out. That means that app is off. So if I click on it, I'm gonna get this little message that says time limit. You're, you've reached your limit on Instagram. And then I have a couple of options. I can say, okay, and it will exit out of the app or I can say ignore limit. And then I have three options. I can say one more minute, and that's for if I just need to finish leaving a comment real quick, if I just need to finish reading an email, just, just if I need to finish up one little thing real quick. My second option is remind me in 15 minutes. So it's kind of like a snooze button. It will shut the app off again in 15 minutes so I can finish up whatever I was doing. And then ignore limit for today. I like that it has this option so that on days where things are not the same schedule as they usually are, I have the option to just ignore the limit that day for that app and not have to reset my whole schedule. So if I click eh, one more minute, it'll bring me right back to my Instagram. We're gonna go back into here and turn that off because I don't like having app limits. Also, you can turn your app limits off if you just want them to be off while you're on vacation or something. You can just hit that little switch and it will and it will turn your app limits off and then you can switch them all back on later. All right, the next thing we're gonna set up is actually not in settings, it's in health. So we're gonna go over to the health app. And from here, we're gonna go to browse and go down to sleep. So we're gonna set up bedtime. So we're gonna go down to your schedule and edit your schedule, that just edits it for tomorrow if you want tomorrow to be a little bit different, if you want it to be off from your normal schedule. I have three different schedules set up here because I have my weekdays and then I have my two weekend days are a little bit different. This is where you set up the time that you want to be asleep by and the time that you want to be awake by and the days of the week that this correlates to. Sunday through Thursday, I wanna to go to bed at 10, wake up at 7 a.m. 7 a.m. on Friday also. Friday nights, again, like I said, I stay up until like at least midnight. 
And for me personally, I need like nine hours of sleep to function properly and to not feel tired. So my sleep goal is nine hours. And as you can see, it went gray when you meet your sleep goal and it stays yellow until you've dragged the dials to uh, meet your sleep goal. Below that you have the options for your wake up alarm. I have mine set up to wake me up with haptic only. That's why sound is turned all the way down. So my watch actually buzzes to wake me up as well as the lights in our bedroom have a slow like sunrise turn on that helps wake us up. It's just a lot. It's just a lot more natural and a lot easier on the body to wake up to these subtler cues than a beeping alarm. But if you need a beeping alarm, you do you. So this is my full sleep schedule. This is the time that I want to be asleep by and the time that I want to be awake by. Of course, I'm not sticking exactly to this every single day. You know how it is. Below that is where I set my sleep goal. And below that is my wind down time. During wind down, your phone screen goes dim and it starts to help you disconnect from your phone. Like I said, I don't really want to be on my phone an hour before bed. So if I want to be asleep by 10, I want to be off my phone at nine. And you'll notice that my downtime for screen time turns on at nine. That is also helping me to cue my brain that it is time to go to bed. It shuts off all my apps. My screen goes dim. My lock screen looks different. The same as we set up with the downtime, we can set up wind down shortcuts. So I have my wind down shortcuts and my downtime shortcuts the same, just to make things easier. But let's say you set up your bedtime and you don't set up downtime. Well, it just means that all of your apps will still be available and they won't be dimmed out, but on your lock screen, you'll still have those shortcuts available to you so that you can bypass all your other apps and get straight to what you need without looking at the other apps and getting sucked in. And then you may set up your downtime in the morning. So you wake up at 7 a.m., but you don't wanna be on your phone until nine. You would set up your downtime 7 a.m. to 9 a.m and you could put whatever shortcuts you need in the morning. So if you need your productivity shortcuts, if you need access to, for me, it would be like GoodNote, Notion, Reminders, Weather, those are like the apps that I would use first thing in the morning when I'm eating breakfast, planning my day, I would give myself access to those, but nothing else. You could also set up screen time while you're working so that you can stay focused and only have access to the apps that you use for work and not and not the apps that you have for fun. And then these last, the last little options are just asking if you can automatically turn on bedtime and track your time in bed and stuff like that. So you can set those up to work however you would like. And I also have it set up with my watch so that my watch stays on when I sleep and it can track my sleep a lot closer. Speaking of the watch app, make sure you go to notifications in the watch app if you have one and set up your notifications for each of the apps on your watch. And if you want things to just mirror your phone, you can also just set it up to mirror the alerts from your phone. I don't keep a ton of apps on my watch. I just keep what I need. So I think most of the things on there can notify me because that's where I want my notifications to go so that I'm not picking up my phone. Generally speaking, if I get text messages or need to use reminders real quick, stuff like that, I just do it with my watch with voice to text, it is much quicker for me while I'm in the middle of doing other things. So you probably noticed that between do not disturb screen time and bedtime, a lot of these settings do some of the same things, but to really get the benefits of all the different things that they offer, I set all of them up. Now, the number one thing that I think you should take away from this video, if you don't set up anything else, set up your notifications. Do not allow social media to send notifications to your phone. This may be difficult at first if that's what you're used to. I remember that for me years ago, it was different, but it has been such an amazing help for my mental health to only look at social media when I want to, when I think about it, and to not really care if there's notifications waiting for me. I mean, for me, there's always notifications waiting for me, especially on TikTok, but I'm not worried about them. I'm not worried about checking them. I check them when I choose to. Use the settings provided to you to set your phone up to work for the life that you want. The best way to change a habit is to think about the person that you want to be. 
And for me, one of those things is I am not somebody that is addicted to social media. I am not somebody that needs to look at my phone when I first wake up. So I put my phone to bed in my office and I sleep all the way on the other side of the house so that it's not even there for me to pick up when I first wake up in the morning. And trust me, once you start that momentum, it's much easier to keep throughout the day. I have not gotten on my phone first thing in the morning, not gotten on my phone all morning through work because I was like, no, I need to focus, I need to get work done. I'll, I'll check my TikTok notifications later, I'll reply to comments later because like that's part of my job. I end up not getting on TikTok for two days. I ended up not getting on social media for two days because it was the momentum that was easy to keep. Social media platforms want to pull you in and they want to lock you there with their endless scrolling. But creating just this little bit of friction, just your phone saying, hey, it's time to get off, time to stop using me, will give your brain a chance to recognize the pattern that it's in and break the pattern. You're putting up barriers and making it harder to continue the endless scrolling. And please, again, if there's only one thing that you do with this video, turn off badges for as many things as you can. All right, thank you guys so much for watching. I hope this video helps you take a little bit more control over your phone, over your schedule, over your routine, and implement some of these recommendations when people make videos about morning routines and night routines and productivity hacks, all of that kind of thing. Don't forget, your D&D window, your do not disturb window is your time. Don't let anybody make you feel bad for it. We're allowed to take time for ourselves. It's the most important time we could take. My hiccups stopped, I just realized that. They must have stopped while I was talking earlier. <laughs> I will see you guys next time. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to follow me on Instagram, Twitter, and TikTok. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button and ring that bell so you never miss so that you never miss a video from me. And drop a like on this video if it helped at all. If you set up some of these settings, let me know in the comments if you use these settings and how you use them, if there's a better way that I could be using them so that they're not all just overlapping each other because that might be redundant, but you know what? It works. And I'll see you guys next week. Bye y'all. Thank you.